His name, Gaston de Voort, heard to Han and Z, the undisputed champion of the last few years. This is the story of the foreman who chased success with giant steps. But this national one-man show came too early. He would rather have enlarged his stock first, but in pigeon flying, one can't order success appropriately. At this highlight in a pigeon flying career, it is most suitable to look back on 35 years successful pigeon fancying. In the company of a good glass of beer, and of their friend Roger van Derke, the De Voorts looked at a few old photographs. Testimonies of highlights in the life of a pigeon fancier's family during their Western Flemish wanderings. Danny, now father's right hand, but at that time only about 10 years old, but already possessed by pigeons. Mother de Vogt shared the joys and sorrows with her pigeon fanciers and is still the driving force behind this high competition sport. In 1956, short after his wedding, Gaston de Vogt started pigeon fancying behind his house in Bredene. His first loft only contained 12 pigeons, but very soon this increased. In the beginning, he took part in speed races, but after a few years, he changed to medium distance. Norbert Norman recognized the capacities of Gaston de Voort as a talented fancier and persuaded him to take charge of Mas Palomas. It was there that De Vogt got fascinated by the long distance competition. Under the name De Smet De Vogt, a lot of prizes were won. In 1975, the final change took place after the pigeons had been auctioned. These pigeons were responsible for Mr. De Vogt's fame in the early 70s. It wouldn't be the last time. When Gaston built his house in the Hahn from 1978 until 1982, a roomy loft was anticipated. And it was clear that long distance races wouldn't be at stake. Behind a beautiful villa, the breeding pigeons were housed in a beautiful breeding loft and a matching aviary. Also, the widow hens received a suitable housing. When examining Gaston de Vogt's skills, it becomes obvious that his strength lies in his hunger for perfection. This obsession is revealed in every stage of his fancying, and it is the key to one of the most remarkable successes in Belgian pigeon fancying. Perfect hygiene, also in the breeding loft, is essential. The floor grills form the first barrier against coccidiosis and worm infections. Large, airy and clean lofts for the sometimes ill-treated widow hens. A draft-proof ventilation system provides unrestricted supply of oxygen. The widower's loft is situated under the roof. A beautiful weathercock indicates the north to the long-distance athletes, although this wasn't absolutely necessary in 1989.
Also here, ventilation plays an important role and a lot of attic windows provide free access to air and sunlight. The rich experience gathered by Costan de Vogt on his wanderings are melted together in this perfect loft, perfect both for the fancier and pigeon. These perfect lofts contain a rich stock that made 1989 into an unforgettable year. During our visit, the widowers were hatching a second clutch. This was the moment to shoot some idyllic pictures. indicates the first long-distance racer arriving. Until recent years, young pigeons were Gaston de Vogt's most powerful weapon. In 1986, Argenton formed the battlefield for the junior team. Out of 15,003 younglings, he conquered first 13 and 14 national prizes. In later years, more emphasis is placed on racing with older pigeons and on the national long-distance competition. A few young hens have to provide the necessary championships marks, although Sun Danny is a fan of young pigeon racing. These little champions make up for 19% of the normal stock. When he left Mas Palomas, Gaston received, as a goodbye present from his employer, a basket filled with eggs. This cross-breeding material came from Benoit van Riesen, Roger van Dijke, Lissewege, Herman van Damme, Oostkam, and Georges Bolle, Kortemark. Interbreed also took place with the late André Pintelon, Houtave, and Noël Peren Zedelhem. Mostly young females will be entered for the national events. Young males are spared for the future. During their birth year, three times 300 kilometers will do largely for a promising junior. Younglings that are basketed weekly are not likely to perform from Cahors or Barcelona. Gaston de Vogt managed to become all-round champion as well as long-distance champion with only nine pigeons, seven old and two young ones. Walter was the ace of the 1989 season. He'd gained his championship mark on Brie but surpassed this by its victory in the Dax Provincial Race. Domine is from 84 and was the first registered from Brie. It's a real ace, and in 1990, it can demonstrate its capabilities in the breeding loft. Vechter is also from 84 and was second registered from Cahors. It's a pigeon with a bright eye and an energetic head. This long-distance racer provides a lot of pleasure to the fancier. Benjamin is from 85 and provided his share as first registered on Barcelona.
Nick is from 86 and doubtlessly the best pigeon of the De Vogt stock. He was the first registered on Cahors and Arbonne and second registered on Montauban. He's the offspring of two pure Norman pigeons. It's a twister and according to Peter Weir, this is a sign of quality. Mozart, also from 86 and Nick's equal. It was registered first on Montauban and second on Arbonne and gained the same amount of first prizes. It also sprang from two Normans and is the favorite of Caston de Vogue. Nick and Moser were placed in the breeding loft in 1990. And last but not least, the Kleinen. It was the second registered on Barcelona. It is from 86, has a beautiful head and a sparkling eye, a real winner. Gaston de Vogt has built up a varied fancying career. The success and the glamour since 1982 haven't changed him and he remained the quiet man he's always been. And this honors champion de Vogt. As a souvenir, he treasures his first certificate, mentioning two prizes of honor on Arras in 1956. His living room is decorated with the Belgian tricolor of all-round national champion and of long-distance champion. They are the visible evidence of an incomparable achievement. Together with a long line of trophies, they clearly state out that Gaston de Vogt is the Belgian number one of the late 80s. Pigeon fancying in family context on high level is the slogan in this coastal village. An inventive German friend sent the champion pigeons of the De Vogt stock in living room size as a New Year's present. The great ball of fire so often described in pigeon epics was already setting into the sea when we left this Flemish champion. A little bit of romanticism mixed with a lot of pigeon passion. Or is Gaston de Vogt building a pigeon empire where the sun never sets 